Hello, Rocket Jump Film School. I'm Will Campos. I'm the, uh, what am I now? <laughs> Hi, Rocket Jump Film School. I'm Will Campos. I'm the head writer uh, here at Rocket Jump, and today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit about log lines. So what is a log line? A log line is a short one to two sentence summary of what your story is about. But essentially the way I kind of like to think of it is it isn't a summary of the plot. It's an explanation of the central conflict or the heart of the story. Here are a few examples. A high school chemistry teacher diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer turns to manufacturing and selling methamphetamine in order to secure his family's future. Or a young thief seeking revenge for the death of his brother is trained by the once great but aged Zorro who also pursues vengeance of his own. Or an FBI agent must go undercover in the Miss United States beauty pageant to prevent a group from bombing the event. Or, when bitten by a genetically modified spider, a nerdy high school student gains spider-like abilities that he uses to fight evil as a superhero after tragedy befalls his family. So why on earth do you need a logline? Well, the classic example of when loglines are very handy is what's called the elevator pitch. Which is, you walk into an elevator and uh, holy cow, there's Harvey Weinstein in the elevator. And you summon up your courage and you say, Mr. Weinstein, I have a terrific movie idea for you. But you've only got until the elevator reaches the bottom floor. And he goes, all right, kid, what do you got? And so you start in and you go, okay, well, it's about this New York cop. And uh, he's married to this woman who lives in Los Angeles. And their marriage is kind of on the rocks. She's taken her maiden name. She works for this Japanese company. And he comes for the Christmas party. And ding, you're at the bottom floor. You've blown it. You haven't even gotten through the first two minutes of your movie and Harvey Weinstein's out the door, uh, your Hollywood dreams are over, you might as well move back to uh, Kansas. But you might also go, uh, he says, all right, what's your movie about? And panicking, you go, it's, um, it's about a cop who fights criminals. Ding, that could describe 9,000 different movies, way too vague. So for those reasons, it's important for other people to be able to understand what your story is about. However, the other side of this, and the reason that I think loglines are really important and a really useful tool for writers, is that it's also important for you to understand what your story is about. So how do you write a logline? How do you put one together? For me, at the heart of it, a great logline answers four very specific questions. Who's your main character? What do they want? What's in their way? And how do they overcome what's in their way to get what they want? To me, if you can answer all four of those questions in one to two sentences, you can, you've got a kick-ass logline. Uh, easier said than done, by the way. So who's the protagonist of your film? In Die Hard, your main character is John McClane. Hey, I'm John McClane. In The Matrix, it would be Neo. In Triple X, that would be, of course, Xander Cage. Now, you might be like, well, I don't really have a main character. I have an, on an ensemble, and that's totally fine. If you were doing a log line for Little Miss Sunshine, you might say an eccentric, dysfunctional family is the core main character of this log line. When you're describing a main character or a protagonist for a log line, the job kind of breaks down into two different categories, uh, describing the character's surface details and describing their personality details. So let's say we're writing a screenplay called Die Hard and we want to do a logline for it. And our main character is John McClane. Uh, so let's go through our surface details and our personality details for John McClane. All right, so surface details again, these are the things you could figure out about the character just by looking at them. Uh, so surface details, we know that John McClane, uh, occupation is a big one. Uh, so he's a police officer. It's okay, I'm a cop. He's from New York. I'm a cop from New York. We know that he is, what, estranged from his wife? Estranged from his wife. We know that he's a father of two kids. Yeah, two. Ruggedly handsome. He's male, obviously. He looks a lot like Bruce Willis. So what do we know about John McClane and his personality? What do we know about who he is as a character? So we know what, he's wisecracking. He's driving his car, Stevie Wonder? Maybe a bit hot-headed. The f lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? He's stubborn. He's a bit macho, I would say. He doesn't like talking about his feelings. So you divorced? Just drive the car, man. He's resourceful. He's cunning. You know, he's probably a good dad. He's a bit of a jerk sometimes. He's blue collar, uh, unpretentious. But how do you choose which of these ways to describe him? To understand that, we need to know what are the aspects of their character that are the most important to the central conflict of this story. And how do you figure out the central conflict of the story? Well, you answer the next two questions on our board. What does your main character want and what's in their way? Okay. So let's start with what do they want? So when he comes to Los Angeles, he's holding this big teddy bear. We key in very early that he wants to reconcile with his wife. 
But that doesn't carry us all the way through the story. This isn't just a story about a guy reconciling with his wife. This isn't, it's not an Ingmar Bergman film. In Ingmar Bergman's Die Hard, it would be in black and white, and it would just be three hours of, you know, poignant relationship drama as John and uh, Holly work through their marital issues. But that's not the movie we have. We have the John McTiernan Die Hard. And the John McTiernan Die Hard has a lot of stuff blown up in it. So what else does John McClane want? Well, we can look through the movie, right? And we see him fighting terrorists, punching out bad guys, he's matching wits with Hans Gruber. Hans! John McClane's want to reconcile with his wife starts to transform over the course of the film because of circumstances, and it becomes a desire to save his wife's life. Hi, honey. Now that we know what he wants, we gotta know what's in his way. What is he struggling against? But what's in the way of John reconciling with his wife? He's stubborn. He didn't move out to Los Angeles. Uh, Holly's career is in his way. And once we get to his want to save his wife's life, uh, we get to those more obvious forces of antagonism. So the first one that leaps out to mind is, of course, Hans Gruber, international criminal. And then we've got Gruber's goons. But there's more to it than that. We also have Ellis in danger as his wife. You've got the media, the snobby reporters, and you've got the incompetent police officers. Incompetent police. They're going after the lights. And of course, the murderous FBI guys. Okay, so we know who our main character is. We know what they want. We know it's in the way of what they want. That brings us to our fourth and final logline question. How do they overcome what's in their way to pursue what they want? One of the ways that I like to think about this is what verbs really describe the action of our film. For John McClane, what do we see him doing? We see him matching wits with people. Oops. Specifically with Hans Gruber, right? No bullets. It's this kind of a cat and mouse game. We see him hiding and, and evading. We see him fighting, uh, outsmarting. We see him confessing and opening up. She never heard me say I'm sorry. He apologizes at the end of the movie. We see him defying the police officers. And I am in charge of this situation. Oh, you're in charge. We see him bonding, adapting, surviving, shooting, punching, leaping. That's probably pretty good for now. Now that we know how they're trying to overcome what's in their way to get what they want, which means it's now time for the arduous and excruciating task of putting our logline together. Oh crap, uh, I forgot. Um, there's, okay, <laughs> there's a secret fifth question, guys. There's a secret fifth logline question, and it's where does our story take place? Your audience needs to know if the story takes place in space or on Earth or in a city. Like, the, it's, it's a good thing for the audience to have a general picture of the setting of your story. Where are we? So, in terms of Die Hard, it's in Los Angeles. What do we know? It's a Nakatomi Plaza. It's an under-construction office building. It's still server flows under construction. It's a Christmas party. It's Christmas Eve. Okay, so now that we have all of this information, let's see if we can take a run at figuring out a one to two sen sentence synopsis of Die Hard. <sighs> all right, so Die Hard by Will Campos. <laughs> So let's start by describing our main character. And again, we can go back to those details. So I definitely am feeling like I want to describe that he's a cop. I feel like that gives you a lot of the character already. And then what kind of cop is he? I think back to those conflicts we talked about. So for now, like I'm kind of feeling like I want to play around with a stubborn cop. Because I feel like that's a word that kind of gives a lot of who John McClane is to me. I feel like it's worth saying that he's from New York, that just saying he's a cop doesn't. So like a stubborn New York uh, cop. Let's throw in, I feel like I might lose it, but let's say a stubborn, wise-cracking New York cop. I might say a stubborn, wise-cracking New York cop uh, flies to Los Angeles to reconcile with his estranged wife. So maybe we can do something like, a stubborn, wisecracking New York cop flies to Los Angeles to reconcile with his estranged wife, um, only to find himself matching wits with deadly European criminals when they take over his wife's office Christmas party. Okay, all right, so what do we have? 
A stubborn, wisecracking New York cop flies to Los Angeles to reconcile with his estranged wife, only to find himself matching wits with deadly European criminals when they take over his wife's office, office Christmas party. This technically works, but it doesn't feel good. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't quite, it kind of falls apart. It's a little bit confusing. There's like three different articles going on here. We have they and his wife's uh, and then Christmas party. Like it just gets a little vague. So, um... Uh, but when deadly to European terrorists hijack her office Christmas party, he must... Oh, no, okay. I was trying to get to like a, but he must match wits with them to save her life, right? Like, so he comes to LA to reconcile with her, but then this crazy thing happens, and now he has to do X, Y, and Z. Um, I feel like that uh, structure could kind of get us somewhere. Um... Hijack, I'm still not, you don't really hijack a party. Um, I could maybe do a take hostages at her office Christmas party. Okay, again, like, okay, so this is this where I kinda, we can kind of look back at these verbs we came up with. Cat and mouse game, I like. Uh, outsmart, okay. Uh, uh, vicious, let's just say one, European terror. I and mean, we, we need to know they're European? Probably not, right? Um, but when terror, ruthless terrorists take over, take hostages at our office Christmas party, he must, it, or maybe it's like, it's up to him. Like that kind of gives you something like it's up to him. Okay, here's what we've got. A stubborn, wisecracking New York cop flies to L.A. to reconcile with his estranged wife. But when ruthless terrorists take hostages at our office Christmas party, it's up to him alone to match wits with their cunning leader in a deadly game of cat and mouse. Not bad. I could also see, like, if you wanted to do, like, a more hacked down version of this, a stubborn New York cop battles terrorists at his estranged wife's office Christmas party. <laughs> Okay, so here's what, uh, this is a fun little blog called Bitter Script Reader. A New York cop tries to save his estranged wife from terrorists who have taken an LA office building hostage on Christmas Eve. That's really good and I wish I came up with it. Ah! Um, so there's a million ways to skin this cat. What I like about this, they kind of solved that problem I was having of how exactly do you describe what Hans Gruber and his goons are up to. Like for me, it took they ruthless terrorists take hostages at her office Christmas party. Um, which, what I don't like about this is it doesn't give you Nakatomi Plaza, which is such a character in the movie. It's like this big building. Like, they're taking over a whole building. It's not like this is just some office. Like, they are, they. this is part of a much bigger scheme. Um, so that's what I love about an L.A. office building. The other thing they really do, and this is what's so good, is they give you L.A., in the middle, so we get that fish out of water thing where we have our New York cop and then we have, he's in Los Angeles, uh, in the middle of this phrase also describing something else. So uh, from terrorists who have taken over an LA office building or to have taken an LA office building hostage on Christmas Eve. Um, so this is really, really good. Just, you know, just make it more like this and less like what I did. So like anything, writing a great log line is a skill. It takes practice. It's something you gotta do over and over and over again to get good at it. Uh, I found one really fun way uh, to get good at log lines is to take a movie and to write a log line for it without mentioning what the movie's title is and to pitch it to people and see if they can guess the film. So we encourage you to do that on our forums. Uh, Take a movie you love, write a logline for it, and post it. And if it's if it's a really great logline, someone who's seen that movie will read it and go, "Oh, that's Die Hard. That's Pirates of the Caribbean. That's Triple X. Whatever your actual, <laughs> maybe a movie that no more people actually like." But um, I I really encourage you guys to uh, share your loglines with as many people as possible. Don't be afraid to pitch them uh, because that feedback that you're going to get from people is how you're going to know if it's working or not. So. Uh, until next time, happy writing, good luck, and uh, uh, thanks for watching. Good morning, son. What do you want, Dad? Do you know what today is? I heard someone was feeling kind of boopy. Dad, please stop. I am not five.